Thanks, Yorick. Uh, before I start, I just thought I'd tell a little story I heard this morning, uh, given its cod opening. <clears throat> um, there's a guy down the river yesterday and he was coming back up to his car and uh, we had a fisheries officer placed down there and stepped out from behind a tree and uh, this guy had a couple of cod in a bucket and the fisheries officer said, uh, sir, could I please have a look at your uh, fishing licence? And the guy sort of looked at him and said, um, I haven't just caught these, these are my pet fish. And the fisheries officer said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, every day I'll um, walk them down to the river and I'll put them in the river and I'll let them have a swim around, get a bit of exercise, then they jump back into the bucket and I'll take them home again and put them in the tank. So the fisheries officer said, I've got to see this. This is, uh, you know, I've never heard this one before. They went down the river and the guy tipped the fish into the river. After a few minutes, the fisheries officer said, um, what's going on here, you know? Um, where are your fish? Can we get them back in the bucket? And he said, what fish? <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, research, which is what I do, and why it's important in managing freshwater ecosystems. I'm going to fly through a few slides and try and catch up a bit of time, but in particular I want to talk about what's working, what's not working, and how we can use some of this information to make a fishery better over time. I'll skip that one, but it basically says there's been a lot of bad things happen, as you guys know. Um, and there's a couple of ways we can fix those bad things. Um, one of them is through catchment restoration. I've talked for the last couple of years on that, so uh, environmental flows or fish passage or habitat restoration. And another way is through stocking. So I'm going to focus on stocking today. I want to talk about uh, the state of the science around what we know about stocked fish versus natural fish and also the, the current uh, knowledge gaps and sort of how we can use those, in, this information to make things better. I guess uh, underneath all this is we're in a unique situation in Victoria at the moment, um, especially in fisheries management. So there's a lot of opportunity in fisheries management and, and a will to, to try different things. So that's, you know, that doesn't always happen and we need to capitalise on that and learn by doing and look for opportunities to increase bang for buck. So into the future, where, you know, if, if resources do get tighter, we make sure that we're doing you know, the, the smartest thing. I'm going to use some case studies to give some example of this. Uh, so the Goulburn, I'm going to talk about Golden Perch and Murray Cod, the Loddon, Broken Camp Paspi, and the Mitter River, and also a bit of an example on the Murray River. So to start with, I'll do a bit of audience participation here. This is about Golden Perch um, in the Goulburn River between Nagambi and the Murray. So I might get a show of hands for those who would think that uh, less than 50% of the golden perch in the Goulburn are stocked. One. And so does that mean the rest of you think that more than 50% of the golden perch in the, in the Goulburn are stocked? More than 50%? All right. This is the, the latest data. This is pretty new. We can see about nearly 70% of golden perch uh, in the Goulburn River, the stock. So it's, uh, you know, stocking's really driving this population. We've also got some natural spawnings and some immigration, so there's fish moving in from the Murray, but stocking's really important down in the, in the Goulburn at the moment. This is the Camp Paspi, um, almost all stocked. Uh, there's a little area down the bottom where a few come in from the Murray, and then you've got a barrier so they can't move up past that. And the Loddon. So a lot of stocked fish, some native fish, um, and also some immigrants. So for golden perch in our rivers in Victoria, uh, stocking is one of the main drivers that's, um, that's uh, uh, providing a good fishery and good fishery values. Try this again. So this, so this is for Murray cod in the Goulburn River. So people who think that less than uh, sorry, people that think that more than 50% of Murray cod in the Goulburn are stocked. A show of hands. More than 50% stocked. And less than 50%? Yep, about even. So in the Goulburn, the majority of Murray cod are up around 70 80%. And this is, this is total numbers across here, and this is different years, are naturally spawned. But we've also got you know, a reasonable number, about 
15 to 30 per cent in any one year that are coming from stocking. And that's from around sort of 80 to 90,000 fingerlings per annum in that, in that stretch of the Goulburn. So this is the sort of first information that shows us how well our stocking might be working for that species. Here's a couple of other rivers. Um, it basically shows, so the Campaspe we've got no Murray Cod data, but the Broken River, there's a lot of natural spawning going in, and particularly in one year, 2016-17, there was a lot of a really good recruitment event, and so we're sort of looking at why that was. But Gunbower Creek and Mitter River um, mainly source, the Murray Cod in those systems mainly source from stocking. So what can we do with this info? So to say we take the Goulburn River and we've got um, a number of Murray Cod in the Goulburn River, you've got some naturally spawned fish and you might add to them with some stocked fish. You might expect that, you know, if you had six naturally spawned fish and you had another two stocked fish that you might get eight. There's a possibility that those two stocked fish might just, um, I suppose, take, the, take advantage of some of the new habitat and replace a couple of the, the naturally spawned fish. But I guess what we're really interested in working, we work closely with fisheries on, is how do we increase the numbers of both stocked and naturally spawned fish to make a better fishery. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, obviously any river's got a carrying capacity above which, you know, whether you stock or there's, there's even natural spawning, it's, it's full. It can only support a certain amount. But outside that, we can use stocking and, and smarter stocking or habitat restoration. Like I said, I'm going to talk about stocking. Um, the other things like fish passage, re-snagging, environmental flows, riparian restoration, water quality, all the stuff catchment management authorities work on are really important as well. We've got good evidence to show that they work. Um, and we're also starting to develop this uh, evidence around stocking. So impacts of things like the size of fingerlings, stocking locations, and the, or the spread, or the, even the timing of stockings and how that relates to river flow or temperature. So I'll give a few examples of this. Um, so fingerling condition, this is some, uh, one of the questions we've got at the moment. So say we stock, um, you know, 12 one gram fish and end up with a certain amount of adult Murray cod. You come out with a, a price per adult Murray cod. Is it better to look at stocking a smaller number of larger fish? And do you get a better outcome, a better bang for buck from that? And so that's one of our, our key questions. Uh, I've got actually got an example I'll go to after this, but so stocking location or spread so say so we had 100 fingerlings and we stocked them at two spots on a river. Now that's a $10 stocking cost and you end up with two adult fish out of those. It's $5 per adult fish. This is just an example. If you spread those 100 fingerlings out, it costs much more to stock if you spread them over a larger area of river. Um, so you double your stocking cost, but maybe you get more adult fish. And so cost be, uh, the cost benefit of that sort of approach could be better. And these are the sorts of things that we're starting to test now with, with the VFA. And this is an example of that. So this is golden perch and stocking sites. Uh, this is the distance down the bottom between stocking sites and YCS, which is year class strengths of two year olds. And basically what it shows, as you spread your stocking sites out further, you get a greater chance of survival of to two year old fish, especially with golden perch, which are quite mobile. Um, you know, they can fill the areas between the stocking sites quite quickly. Smarter stocking, a case study in the Mitter River. People would know about the Mitter River and Dartmouth Dam and why it was built. Um, basically, since it's been built, it releases a lot of cold water and it varies the flow in the Mitter River, which used to hold a, a lot of native fish. Um, so we've got increased um, size and variation of summer flows. Big impact on fish, I'll click through that. So we had Murray cod persisting in the midder in pretty low numbers, but some big old fish in there. And in the last decade, 15 years, catches have started to increase dramatically. And stocking has been underway since 2006, but there's also been really low flow years. So this was during the millennium drought. And um, I guess the community out there wanted to know, well, what's going on here? Is this a result of those low flows or as a result of uh, stocking? So we did, went up there and did a project funded by MDBA, determined ages and year classes strengths for each sampling event. 
And what we found was there were certain years, and I can't make this work, but in certain years you had much higher survival of small Murray cod through to adult size. So, so we're interested in what is it about those years that makes that survival high. And here was one of the things, this is temperature and survival. Basically when stocking was happening below about 20 degrees you were getting zero survival. Above that, and you know, once you get up to 23 degrees you're getting really good survival of stocked fish. And so if we can tie that, the stockings in with releases from dartmouth uh, in a way where the temperature and um, stocking times and locations mesh, we've got a much greater chance of, of increasing, increasing the fishery. I won't tell you how we got this result, but the population model, and basically what this shows is if we stopped stocking now, two in every 15 years, that black line, we might get a natural recruitment, and you know, it might keep the population ticking along, but over time it would peter out and probably the population would um, disappear. The blue line in the middle, which is a bit hard to see, is if we stayed stocking as we do at the moment, it'll tick along as it is at about that level, which is sort of okay. And the pink line at the top is if we start looking at stocking, you know, working with river managers to get them to release water a bit differently, but also trying to stock during those, you know, strategically. So maybe not every year, but every two or three years when conditions are right. And that can basically double the number of adult females over the next 20 or 30 years. So that's the sort of information that's really important for, for fisheries managers. And I'll just finish up on a, another case study. So this is from the Murray River. We're measuring how flow can impact survival of Murray cod in their first year. Obviously the, any, a lot of our rivers, our irrigation rivers are getting run uh, to meet a heap of demanding needs, whether it's irrigation or the environment. And what we found, so we've been working up around Yarrawonga below the, uh, below the weir for about um, 20 or 30 years now, so we've got a lot of data. We, we found a, a really strong negative association with summer discharge. And we're, we're getting to the point now where we can find uh, with a fair bit of certainty that um, we get up to nearly 30% reduction in year class strengths when the long term average summer flow is doubled. And so for areas like the Goulburn where we've got inner valley transfers and you can see that uh, down here where the arrow is, we have got that high summer flow that, net, that can re reduce the year class strength by 30%. And obviously that could impact stocked fish as well that are going in small and being impacted, impacted by that. And also another one we found is um, the strong negative effect of extreme flow variability during the spawning period. And so what, this, what, what we think is happening here is um, this is when cod are on their nests and we have you know, big peaks in flow came down and released for um, generally irrigation type approaches. And we can get a 25, if we see a 25% change in discharge over a three day period in October to November, we can get a 20% reduction in year class strength in that year. So this is really new information that we can start working with water managers on to say, look, if we wanna increase cod populations uh, in any one system, we want to try and avoid those type of situations. And this is an example, uh, this is the Campaspe, a 24 hour period in the Campaspe where a big flow was released, that can impact cod on their nests. Uh, same thing at the Murray River this year, over a, you know, a, few, a few day period we went from 15,000 megs down to about 9,000 megalitres a day. Um, you know, that, that's right within that slot, 20% reduction in year class strength for that year. So I guess I've talked about, about stocking and some of the work we're doing to try and, and make it smarter and work better. Um, you know, I always rabbit on about this, but this stuff won't work unless we've got healthy environments and good water quality and all that sort of stuff. So getting rid of, of barriers, uh, like the one on the Tea Garden Creek on the ovens, um, you know, major barrier across one of our most pristine rivers needs to come out completely. You know, we've got other systems where, you know, we Pyramid Creek that could use some re-snagging. We really need the habitat restoration to go hand in hand with this other information uh, and fisheries management as well. Thank you.